Another key witness has been indicted as a Chinese agent. And I find it uh, incredibly rich Mr. Swalwell is going to come to this committee and lecture us about how China penetrates our government. I think that's something <laughs> he may know a thing or two about. Eric Swalwell. And I want you to know that the video that you're about to see, all part of Eric Swalwell's testimony and his pushback, against uh, Tony Bobulinski, this was celebrated. Democrats thought this was a home run. Democrats thought Eric Swalwell was their champion. They, they thought he was the greatest thing on earth with his uh, display and performance art in this hearing. I'll let you be the judge. It's time to pack it up. And I wanna give you the top 10 reasons why impeachment is dead. Number 10. Your key witness today is testifying from the slammer. Number nine, key evidence of a bribe that you all relied on. The guy who said that has been indicted for lying about that bribe, and he's a Russian asset. Number eight, another key witness has been indicted as a Chinese agent. Number seven, during the Hunter Biden interview, Mr. Chairman, you didn't even stay for the whole time. Number six, Chairman Jason Smith didn't show up at all to the Hunter Biden interview. The same day, number five, Daryl Issa said, it's a big nothing. Number four, today, Jim Jordan began his remarks, not by relying on any evidence for this investigation, but he went off attacking the DOJ about what they're doing with the Catholics. Number three, you all still have not sent the articles of impeachment for the Mayorkas impeachment to the Senate. And that happened last month. Number two, you're now talking about a criminal referral. But if you had evidence for a criminal referral, then you have evidence to impeach somebody for high crimes and misdemeanors. And number one, and I'm sorry to say this, Fox News isn't even carrying this today. In fact, one of their anchors, as they broke away 10 minutes in, said, this is the same hearing over and over and over. At what point are you going to fish or cut bait? So I just have to tell you, it's over. Impeachment's over. Dunzo. Bye-bye. Rigor mortis. Lights out. Curtain drop. Mic drop. Peace. Adios. Sayonara. Au revoir. Or a language that you all understand. Doi siv danya. Did I say that right, Mr. Parnas? Yes. <laughs> I dare you to impeach. But you won't because you don't have the evidence. And because you don't have the evidence, you don't have the votes. Guys, it's dead. And so I'm here to pronounce the time of death. Five sixteen. Say it in Chinese. Impeachment is dead. Five sixteen. Biden impeachment's dead. Joe Biden has been acquitted. What a complete and total fool and a clown. But did you catch that very last part where he said goodbye in multiple languages, including did you get it in Russian? Because, you know, it's all a Russian operation. Did you hear what uh, Representative Anna Paulina Luna said there at the very end? Listen again. Five sixteen. Say it in Chinese. Impeachment is dead. <laughs> Say it in Chinese. It's funny because, you know, he was Stup and Fang Fang, a Chinese spy. Uh, I love that the Democrats keep thinking that he in some way is this uh, a paragon of virtue and the perfect person to be making these arguments on their behalf when he's he's the worst kind of punchline for things like this. It tells you the bubble that they're in. Uh, but Representative Mike Waltz of Florida, he had his time right after Swalwell, and uh, he made the most of it. Mr. Chairman, and I find it uh, incredibly rich Mr. Swalwell is going to come to this committee and lecture us about how China penetrates our government. I think that's something <laughs> he may know a thing or two about. But let's let's talk about how China has penetrated the highest levels uh, of this government. And now, I, I like Congressman Waltz, and I think that was a great line. But to be fair, I my guess is, based on the rumors and stories that I've heard, technically it was Swalwell doing the penetrating. 
You don't know but that. I take it. Well, I got that's right. You're right, Kevin. I don't officially know that. Who knows what could have been going on there? I'm going to add that to the list for confession this Saturday. All right, here, let's go with my including this president and, and this White House, because I think the visual uh, is is incredibly important. Um, Mr. Bobolinsky, Hunter Biden portrayed Chairman Yee, the chairman of CEFC, uh, to Jim Biden as a protege of Xi. Is that accurate? Not only is it accurate, and it wasn't just Hunter Biden, it was James Gillier, Rob Walker. I wouldn't have used the word protege. They just basically, you know. You don't run China's largest state-owned energy company without being close to Chairman Correct. Xi, right? Fair enough. Uh, and by the mid-2000s, uh, Chairman Ye ran a, a business empire estimated, as much as you can estimate a Chinese state-owned enterprise, tens of billions, including, and from a national security standpoint, this is the, the critical piece here, including implementing China's Belt and Road Initiative, not just all over the world, right here in the United States. Is that accurate? A hundred percent. So CFC was effectively the shadow arm of the Chinese government deploying tens of billions of dollars around the world, very well documented. At its peak, I think it was doing $50 billion of revenue per year, one of the top five largest debt diplomacy companies. where they are taking electrical grids, they are bribing officials, uh, they take as collateral, uh, not just grids, ports, airports, key infrastructure that the Chinese government could then leverage and use against uh, any country, but also here in the United States. I mean, that's how the Belt and Road Initiative works. Heck, I was just in the Armed Services Committee with the commander of Indo-PACOM, uh, our Pacific Command, talking about how China is basically gobbling up uh, infrastructure around the world, including here. Uh, so by the, by the mid, what, 2015, 2016, Hunter Biden's developed a very lucrative business relationship. By 2017, Hunter Biden's forged such a partnership with Chairman Ye that he planned to share an office space with him and then just removed Vice President uh, Biden at the House of Sweden in Washington, D.C., correct? Correct. So here's what's interesting. And building on Chairman Fox's uh, questions, Within days of him leaving the vice presidency, ostensibly for work performed, $3 million flows through these shell companies that we've depicted here. I mean, you could see how complicated this is, but the key piece is the flow to Hallie Biden, to Jim and Sarah Biden, to Hunter Biden and his various affiliates. And the kicker here, Mr. Chairman, is that we know Hunter is then complaining about paying all his dad's bills. He's complaining to the other relatives saying, you freeloaders, I'm having to use all this money to pay the big guy's bills, house renovations and all kinds of things, correct? That's correct. And uh, Liz, this goes on for a few more minutes. And I wanted to show it to you because what you're seeing on the screen here, and let's go a little larger with it if we could. Uh, as you can see, you've got China, you've got Chairman Ye, who had the direct relationship and the financial relationship and tons of communications with Hunter Biden. And then on the bottom part of the screen there in red, you see the money being exchanged. You see money going to these various shell companies and then flowing to follow those red lines to the people on the right hand of the screen. At the top, of course, Hunter Biden. Just below that is Joe Biden's brother, James Biden. And just below that is Hallie Biden, the daughter. And of course, we don't know who else was the big guy. Whoever the big guy is got some money too. And as Mike Waltz just said, Chairman, uh, Congressman Mike Waltz just said, we have contemporaneous text messages of Hunter Biden saying, I gotta pay all of dad's bills. Now, I show this to you to explain why you just saw AOC and Eric Swalwell, and uh, we're going to show you one more of the Democrats, going completely insane yesterday. Uh, they were creating a show. Remember, I said, you know, why aren't they just acting like this? Why aren't they acting like this? If this really is nothing, why don't they act like it's nothing? Well, because they know it's not nothing. They know how real this is. They know how serious this is. And they had a job to do yesterday. Their job was to set their hair on fire and to do a circus act so that that got the attention and this wouldn't get the attention. And in some circles it worked, but not here.
Matt here, sure, we showed the circus, but now we're showing you exactly why that circus act was performed. There are serious, serious crimes at hand here. And I go back to the proposition that we made yesterday. Uh, we absolutely have direct evidence, paperwork, complete paper trails, wire transfers, deposits, 100% showing money flowing to the companies owned by Hunter Biden, James Biden, and other members of the Biden family. We know that. You saw Eric Swalwell just there say, well, some of your key witnesses are in jail. Yeah, those key witnesses in jail were the business partners. So clearly they did something illegal. And they're the ones that Hunter and James Biden decided to do business with. They're the ones that that Joe Biden would have communications with all the time, those criminals. So I'm sorry, you're not helping your cause here to diminish these proceedings by saying, hey, half these people are crooks. Yeah, those crooks were the business partners of the president's son. They don't want you to see any of that because this is very real. And this is very serious. And all of the evidence shows exactly the criminal enterprise. And the proposition I laid out yesterday is that either all of that was going on and Joe Biden, of course, after decades in Washington, D.C., literally writing some of the laws pertaining to, to corruption and selling influence, either he, of course, knew about it or he's a complete and total out of complete and total moron a complete and to completely out to lunch is not aware of what time of day it is had, had no idea it, literally a dunce with some sort of mental disability that he could not figure out what his son and his brother was doing but i guess they always use this term plausible deniability it's deniability but it's just not plausible and that's why instead of actually debating the facts as laid out here and actually contesting the evidence. Instead, well, they gave you the circus like this. It is the bondless, broke bluffer, twice impeached, four times indicted, insurrection initiator, election denying, self-declared dictator on day one, and puppet for Putin. The one who wants to terminate the Constitution and defund the FBI. The one who romanticized exchanging of love letters with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. The one who just last week embraced autocrat Orban of Hungary to discuss their diabolical plans to destroy our democracy. The one who proposed a policy to ban Muslims from this country. The one who just this week said any Jewish person who votes for a Democrat hates their religion and Israel. The one who called neo-Nazis carrying tiki torches, tanting Jews will not replace us, good people. The one who referred to African nations as, I quote, whole countries. The one who called NFL players, the majority whom are black, sons of for taking a knee in protest of the ever-present racial inequality and police brutality that continues to pervade our justice system. The one who called Mexicans rapists and promised to build a wall and have them pay for it, and in case you missed it, it didn't happen. The one who told women of color from the United, born in the United States, elected to Congress and serving on this very committee to go back to their own countries. The one who bragged about grabbing women by their private parts. The one who confused his rape victim, whom he claimed was not his type for his very own ex-wife. The one who is an admitted and committed adulterer, who attempted to pay off a porn star for her silence. The one who has publicly mocked people with disabilities. The one who dodged the draft and referred to prisoners of war as losers. The she goes on for two more minutes. And I'll spare you because I think you get the point. Not only does she refuse to actually address any of the evidence that's being uh, presented here or even attempt to explain it away, she doesn't just change the subject the way AOC and Eric Swalwell did. She changes the subject all the way over to who? To the big bad orange man. And they think this works. And hey, maybe it does. Maybe it does for the viewers of MSNBC and CNN, and maybe it works in the editorial room at the New York Times. It doesn't work in America. It doesn't work where you're still having to pay twice as much for gas, and you still have to hunt to find baby formula on the shelves. 
And you see good people being sent away to jail when the Hunter Biden family gets away with it. They may think it works, but it doesn't. You know how sometimes I tell you that a meme says it all in just one graphic, in just one picture, where you don't have to deliver a big monologue. You can just show a meme and it tells you everything you need to know. Yeah. Here's how the Democrats view two major issues before us right now. The person on the left can't remember what year lied about the dress she wore and the story that she told in a court of law is literally a plot line from a Law and Order episode. She gets $83 million and is celebrated as a hero. The man on the right, who also, by the way, happens to be a veteran of the Navy and a graduate of the Navy Nuclear Power School, one of the hardest educational processes you'll have to go through in this country. He has dates. He has texts. He has emails, he has recordings, he has eyewitness accounts. And as you saw from his testimony, he was recounting much of it, not from looking at notes, but just remembering off the top of his head. I think he's a bit of a savant. He's the person the Democrats call a liar. And by the way, if he is, why is he the only one who was a business partner of Hunter Biden's who isn't in jail? Do you think maybe if they had any sort of criminal activity on him, He'd be locked away. I guarantee you he would. Guarantee. Yeah, that, that image right there says it all.